musculoskeletal radiology. Osteopetrosis. Osteopetrosis is a congenital dysplasia, meaning it's a condition present from birth that affects bone development. In this disorder, the normal process of bone resorption is defective. Normally, our bones go through a continuous process of breaking down and rebuilding. This process is carried out by special bone cells called osteoclast. However, in osteopetrosis, these osteoclasts do not function properly, leading to excessive bone formation. As a result, the bones become abnormally dense and hard. But don't be mistaken, while they may seem strong, these bones are actually brittle and prone to fractures. Clinical Features 1. Hepatosplenomegaly Since the bones are too dense, there is less space for bone marrow, which is responsible for producing blood cells. To compensate, the body starts producing blood cells in other organs like the liver and spleen, a process called extramedullary hematopoiesis. This causes the liver and spleen to enlarge, leading to a condition called hepatosplenomegaly. 2. Pancytopenia Because the bone marrow is not functioning properly, there is a decrease in all types of blood cells. This condition is known as pancytopenia, which leads to anemia, low red blood cells, causes fatigue and weakness, leukopenia, low white blood cells, weakens the immune system, making infections more likely, thrombocytopenia, low platelets, increases the risk of bleeding and bruising. So, patients with osteopetrosis may experience fatigue, frequent infections, and bleeding tendencies due to pancytopenia. Radiological Features 1. Bone within bone appearance. One of the most classic signs is the bone within bone appearance. This occurs because new bone is forming within old bone, creating a layered or stack pattern. 2. Sandwich vertebra. The vertebrae look like they have multiple layers, similar to a sandwich. This is a key radiological feature of osteopetrosis and helps to confirm the diagnosis. The CT study shows sharply demarcated sclerotic bands on the inferior and superior end plates of all vertebral bodies, alternating dense, lucent, dense appearance that represents accumulations of excess osteoid. Hyperdense bone structure, bone within bone, and sandwich vertebrae appearance, arrows. Multiple myeloma. Radiological features. One of the most striking findings in multiple myeloma is the presence of multiple punched-out lesions in the bones. 1. Punched-out lesions. These are well-defined, lytic, destructive lesions seen on x-ray. They appear as round, dark holes in the bone, where normal bone has been destroyed. The reason behind this destruction is that cancerous plasma cells release osteoclast activating factors, which break down bone tissue. 2. Raindrop Skull When these punched-out lesions are seen in the skull, they give a characteristic pattern known as the raindrop skull. The skull appears as if it's been dotted with raindrops due to multiple areas of bone loss. This is an important finding that strongly suggests multiple myeloma. Differential Diagnosis Now, it's important to remember that punched-out lesions are not unique to multiple myeloma. Another condition that can show similar lytic lesions is lytic bone metastasis. How do we differentiate? In multiple myeloma, the lesions are numerous, well-defined, and uniform in size. In lytic metastasis, the lesions are irregular in shape and vary in size, often affecting multiple bones asymmetrically. Additionally, multiple myeloma is often associated with bone pain, fractures, and abnormal blood findings, which help in diagnosis. Sturge-Weber syndrome. Rare neurocutaneous disorder that affects the skin, brain, and eyes. Sturge-Weber syndrome is a congenital disorder. It's caused by a somatic mutation in the GNAQ gene, leading to abnormal blood vessel development in the brain, skin, and eyes. Clinical features. One. Refractory seizures. One of the most common symptoms of this condition is seizures that are difficult to control. 
These seizures occur due to vascular malformations in the brain, leading to abnormal electrical activity. 2. Port wine stain, facial capillary malformation. Another key feature is a port wine stain, which is a reddish purple birthmark caused by abnormal blood vessels in the skin. This stain typically appears on the face, often following the distribution of the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve. 3. Glaucoma. Glaucoma is another important feature where there is increased pressure inside the eye. This can lead to vision loss if not managed properly. Radiological features. When we look at the brain imaging, we see a characteristic radiological finding known as tram track calcifications. Tram track calcifications. These are gyral calcifications seen on CT scans, particularly in the cerebral cortex. The name tram track comes from the appearance of parallel white lines resembling tram or railway tracks. These calcifications occur due to cortical atrophy, which happens as a result of poor blood supply to the brain. Most commonly affected nerve. The ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve is most commonly affected in Sturge Weber syndrome. This explains why the port wine stain is usually found in the forehead and upper face. It also contributes to eye-related complications like glaucoma and visual impairment. Brain imaging of a patient with Sturge Weber syndrome and bilateral leptomeningeal capillary venous malformations. A 64-year-old patient with SWS, epilepsy, and severe intellectual disability, non-contrast bone window CT, AB, shows extensive bilateral gyriform calcifications in a curvilinear pattern, often called the tram track sign. Flare MRI, CD, shows extensive atrophy of left frontal and parietal lobes. Post-contrast MRI and transverse axial, EF, and coronal planes, G, shows leptomeningeal enhancement consistent with leptomeningeal capillary venous malformations, LCVMs, in both cerebral hemispheres. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.